Hello everyone, my name is Achi, and I'm back again with another solo dev RPG episode, this being episode 7. Um, I would like to apologize before I be begin, however, because it's been about two months since the last episode, so um, the reason for that is because I just couldn't really be bothered to work on a project, I kind of got sick of it, so I decided to just take a break. I posted some updates on Twitter about that, um, but I'm back now. I've regained my interest and well that brings me to this episode today because I've worked on it again and I would like to show it off. So let's just get into it. The first feature I would like to show off is related to the inventory. If you've watched the last episode you should be familiar with the system already but to give a small recap of how it works um, you can have up to four party members which are displayed on the left here and each character can equip up to four items at a time. You have your weapon slots offhand item slot, armors and trinkets and here at the bottom you can see uh, the items that you're carrying like carrying in your backpack or whatever basically. Uh, in the previous episode I also showed you guys how uh, you can interact with the items, one of the interactions being uh, the equip function but I've made some changes to that so let's talk about that right now. I'm gonna press it and as you can see a new panel pops up when you're going to equip an item. So uh, it should speak for itself, but I'll try to elaborate it on it anyway. This is basically an item comparison window. So uh, if we take a step back, here you can see the stats of your item normally. Th these are just basic stats and then it doesn't give any stat bonuses here. And those same stats are shown here. So let's just equip it. Uh, the interesting stuff happens when you try to equip another item over it. So yeah, uh, on the left you can see the item that you already have equipped, so the old item, and then on the right you can see the new item which you are going to equip if you uh, continue with it. As you can see, uh, the damage is less, so that's why I made the text go red. The hit rate is better, which is why the text is green. It has less crit rate, which is why it's red, and it weighs less, which is green, because a lower weight on an item is generally going to be better. So that's why I made that green. It also has better range, which is why that text is green. And finally, we have the elemental type. Uh, swords deal, well, this sword does plane damage, and the bow here does ice damage. And the color of that text is depending on the, dependent on the type. So if it were to do electric damage or shock damage, as I call it in the game, it would be yellow, for example. Then here on the right, you can see uh, the stat bonuses on the items, and you can compare them. So, as mentioned before, the sword does not give any stat bonuses, but bow actually does. It gives 5 uh, magic defense or resistance, so that's why that number is highlighted in green. So let's just equip it, and then when I try to equip the sword again, you know, it speaks for itself. It draws the same comparisons, except now the colors are reversed, because uh, well, the opposite is true now for uh, whether stat is worse or better. Next feature I would like to show off would be the tab system. So like in the last episode, we only had these inventory slots, right? Well, let's change now. So if I press the Q or E buttons, I can switch the tab, which gives us a lot more space to work with. To give another example of the, um, uh, not offhand, comparison windows, uh, I'm gonna equip something again. For example, the shield, it weighs three and it gives six defense. And then we have this cloak, which weighs less and gives different defenses. And there, there you go, you can see the comparison. If I design it properly, then it should speak for itself. Uh, same with the armor here. And then finally the trinkets. Uh, trinkets are of course a bit different because these are the only items that normally give resistances. So the menu for those is a bit different. But yeah, it works just fine. So, alright, so we got the tab system, we got item comparisons. Something else I've added is a bit more functionality for healing items. In the last episode, I've shown you that the items can heal. Or like, that item that I just used, uh, that can heal HP or mana. That is a function from the last episode. But what, what I've also added is an item that can revive uh, characters. Which I can't really show off right now because uh, the characters aren't dead yet. 
maybe I'll put up a clip uh, later. And I've also added an item that can uh, restore status ailments. Now in this case it heals all status ailments, but I can also add specific items that only heal paralysis or bleeding or whatever status ailment I add. So um, consumables have a bit more functionality now. And finally, whenever an item gives a stat bonus like resistance or uh, like the actual bonuses to your character stats, those actually have an effect now. Like in the last episode, they were just, they're kind of for show. But now when you equip them, they actually uh, add to the total, like the total stats for your character, which is the next thing I want to show off. So let's go back to a different menu and go to the status screen. This one is completely new. When I press that uh, button, it takes me to a different screen entirely. And this is basically where you can get an overview of your entire character. So at the top you have uh, your character portrait with a name, character class, where you've met the character. Um, I can also switch between characters. So I can switch to Taco, for example. Uh, he's the archer class. He was met in the Snowlands and his status is healthy. And then same for this other character. Met in Sandlands, healthy, mage class. So yeah, you can uh, view each character individually. Here you get a basic overview of basically how, how your character is doing, your health, mana, EXP, status ailments, how much EXP you need until the next level up, that kind of stuff that's displayed in the top here. And then on the left, you have your character stats. Uh, I've made sure to make it so that whenever your stat bonus is positive, that stat gets highlighted in green. If I were to equip something that gave like minus HP or something, and the total stat bonus would be negative, then the stat would be red. But well, obviously not everyone is gonna know what these stats do, right? So I've added a menu for that. When you press uh, left, it makes a cursor appear, and then you can select the stat to see what it does. So there you go. I've added a little description for each stat, so that new players can uh, See what each stat does without having to look at a wiki or something. So that's the first menu I've added to the screen. Then the next one is for active skills. So the idea is that every character can have up to seven skills that they can use in battle. And then I might add a separate screen where you can like uh, swap out skills if you uh, happen to have more than seven. So let's take a look at this one. Fireball deals 10 damage, uh, has a 100% hit rate, cannot crit. Costs 10 mana to use, has far range and it deals fire type damage. Uh, and then here at the bottom, I've added some more specific information. So it can only hit one target, it deals added damage when used in sunlight, and it can inflict a burn. So that's basically the format that I want for uh, the spell information. Uh, to give another example, here we have the thunder spell, and here we have a wind blast spell. And yeah, I like how it looks. Uh, I might add another type of panel for spells, uh, for stuff like buff spells, because uh, like generally buffs won't do damage or anything. So then like this would be irrelevant, the hit rate wouldn't matter. Uh, same for the crit rate, so I might add a different panel uh, for different kinds of spells. But for now this works. Uh, and then finally, we have the resistance tab over here which of course shows off uh, your total resistances. To actually show off that the stat bonuses work, I'm gonna change them. I'm gonna change, uh, gonna change the trinket to this scarf, which gives plus one to every resistance. And I'm going to change the bow to this ax, which gives plus three in a lot of stats. And as you can see, you know, the ring gave HP, but because I switched the ring, it no longer makes this uh, stat go green because I no longer have an HP buff. Uh, but you can see how it changes my resistances and these stats over here. All right, so the next thing I've been working on were these tiles over here because I really want to focus on doing some world, blah, 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 world building next. Jeez. So yeah, I just want to uh, be able to make a basic town area, kind of similar to um, the one in The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I really like that art style there. So um, like if you look at my current tiles 
and then look at a screenshot from uh, that game, you can see the similarities, really. Also, I've looked at, I, those are not the only tiles I've looked at. I've also looked at stuff like uh, Pokemon, uh, more specifically the GBA tiles, and some um, stuff that other pixel artists make. So, like, to make these, I just look at a lot of uh, reference, and then I try to just make something myself. So, it ends up being my style, so to speak. Uh, but it's not like I'm inventing the wheel here or anything. So basically these are the tiles that I've made for now. And I've also made a little uh, mock-up image using those tiles, which you can see right here. So uh, before I can really make a town, I want to make a lot more tiles because else uh, I would have to repeat stuff way too much. So I'm going to make some more tiles first and then later uh, I'm going to work on implementing them, implementing the hitboxes so I can make sure that the player doesn't, uh, you know, walk through the houses and stuff. And I also want to add some like uh, warp tiles so that when the player uh, walks up to a house, they can actually enter it. So that's the plan right now, making more tiles, then actually putting them into, into the game and then actually adding uh, hitboxes and functionality to uh, the different tiles. As for the battle system, that one is taking a back seat for now because I want to work on these tiles and actually, you know, forming a world to explore. So that's coming later. The plan for the battle system is actually to uh, just kind of rewrite it because uh, first it looks outdated and second it's pretty glitchy and I think if I just rewrite it with the knowledge that I have right now, um, I can do a much better job at making a functional battle system. So, and that's for the future. For now, I'm just going to focus on these tiles. All right, one more note before I finish the video. Um, I'm going to upload a video to my channel, which is not by me. It's a video by a YouTuber called Monkey Jones. I, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy Jungle. Yes, that's the one. Um, the reason being is that he got his channel unfairly terminated. And uh, well, you really have to watch the video to understand what it's all about. Um, and then when you've watched the video, you'll understand why I've re-uploaded the video on my channel. Um, but yeah, if you see the video in your sub box, don't be surprised. You don't even have to watch it. If you want to watch it, I would recommend you watch it on the, ori the original channel. Um, so you can support the person that way. If you don't even know the person and you don't care, you know, just disregard it entirely. But this is just a heads up. I'm going to upload a video that's not by me, um, so yeah, you'll be aware of it. That's all I've got to say. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.